the fire comes out of my eyes. I destroy your enemies. They can't get close to you. Amen. He says that's where you people make a mistake. You feast in front of the enemy, but you look at them the whole time, and you never get my impartation, my blessing, my victory, because you focus on your circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's good. In the season that we are now, look at Jesus. Amen. It's a year where He's reuniting our eyes with Him. Amen. That it keeps us looking at Him all the time. Mm -hmm. This is such an amazing time. I don't know about you, I can't get enough. And I, every week in the last, especially in the last two months, I call my family together and I said, I want to tell you, heaven is open. Mm. I want to tell you, God proves it to me more and more. The more you pursue Him, the more He just comes and opens up heaven. The more He releases secrets, the more encounters, the more power, the more love. It just never stops. Mm -hmm. It's all in your hands. Mm -hmm. There the word says it's freely given. Because what are you going to do with it? Amen. That's right. We're sitting this afternoon having coffee in front of Starbucks. And I showed my son and said, look at it. Look at how the angels are running on the trees and jumping on the branches. And I asked the Lord, why? What are they doing up in the trees? He said, they're rejoicing, they're dancing. I said, why? And the next moment I saw planes in the distance going, going. And then he said, because like Tao, it's going to be a place where people get released into their ministries. Oh. Their planes. Oh. Their planes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I want to tell you to be able to release him in the planes. That the key is, is to connect spirit to spirit. Exactly what I'm telling you tonight. You're not going to do it in the flesh, on your own power, nothing. Mm -hmm. God spoke to me about all of you while we were worshipping. Oh, yeah. You guys are all very hungry. Yeah. You've got everything inside of you to start a mighty move. Come on, it's here. That's all God needs. It's yeah. Amen. It's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> You're so into that one. It's up to you. It's your choice. It's your choice. What are you going to do with the invitation of Jesus? You're going to look in the natural, pack your bags, leave the house. You're not going to make it. Because there will be resistance. You're going to get resistance, believe me. That's how the devil works. Yeah. But if you sit at the table of feast and you look at Jesus, that's your key. Zechariah 3, key for the season. A vision of Joshua the high priest. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. The Lord has chosen Jerusalem, who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is not as a brand of plucked from fire. Now Joshua was standing before the angel, clothed with filthy garments. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, Remove the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, Behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and I will clothe you with pure vestments. And I said, 
let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord was standing by. And the angel of the Lord solemnly assured Joshua, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways and keep my charge, then you shall rule my house and have charge of, of my courts, and I will give you the right of access yes. among those who are standing here. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, it's what courts are you talking about? Mm -hmm. We're it's all heaven. saying the courts in heaven, mm -hmm. where the rooms in heaven, and the palace, and all over. No, heavenly courts. Yeah. The same courts that you've got here on earth. Oh, That's why yeah. Jesus rebuked yeah. Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they gave you the key. If you walk in my ways. Right. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. You invited when you walk in heaven and earth and the spirit in the same time, you walk in heaven and earth and so you can enter into heavenly courts all the time. Amen. Amen. And for you to change Tao, to change your life, to change your callings, your destinies, everything, you need to enter those courts, the secrets that is given you in heaven. Amen. It is time, yeah. but we never go there. Uh, no. Amen. I have been there, it was on Friday night. Ooh, come on. I think it was on Friday night, one of the nights last week. I spent a whole night in heaven at all the different courts. Oh, glory. Oh, Just about everything that you can think of on earth, there's a court for it. Amen. But you need to, 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 to conform to protocol. Yes. It's not just, yeah, I walk in, yes, Lord, here's my case. There's a pro heavenly protocol as well. And there are things in your life that you need to conform to, to enter into those heavenly courts. Yes, yes, yes. And my teachings about heaven and heavenly courts is not from nobody. It's from Jesus himself. Hallelujah. I don't read other books or listen to teachings. Hallelujah. And that's why it's important when you're walking now, you need to have a witness. To enter in the court. That's why there are clouds of witness. Mm -hmm. Is the cloud of witness walking with you all the time? That's right. Oh, Amen. Because when you enter in heavenly courts confronting Satan, mm -hmm. you need to have a witness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who's your witness? Jesus. Are you walking with the angels? Are they your witnesses? Are you making use of them? Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's what the Lord said, my son Joshua, I come and clothe him and knew, filled the gun, took away all his sins. Why? Because Joshua was obedient to the word of God. Mm, yeah. When you walk in obedience to God, you can enter into those courts. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got no case to enter in front of the Father and you were not righteous. Mm. You were in sin. Right. And here's a court. Most of the courts are in the second heaven. That's what's the only place that Satan can enter. But there's a new court that was revealed to me last year in March. It's in the third heaven. Come on. It's in the palace. Mm. And it's white, white, white. The walls, everything's alive. It's like pearl that changes colors and it moves. Mm -hmm. The bench is everything. And you walk in. You don't even prepare a case or put a file in front of the Father. The judge, you walk in and he said, Boom! Judgment in favor. Oh, and you okay. walk out. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But he said, it will only be those who truly walk in my love, Supreme. my holiness, Amen. my unity. Amen. Clean hands with pure heart. God has given us so much. We read the word, but we don't see all the keys in it. We don't realize that. That's the same with Job. Job 1. That's in court in heaven, yeah. where Jesus spoke to Satan. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a court case. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But if we don't do it with our partner, with the Holy Spirit, 
We are missing out on all these keys. And that is your language of heaven. The language of heaven reveals all the secrets. That's right. Come on. Come on. That's good. He says, I give my, Josh, I give him a new turban. What does it mean? You are given new revelation, new authority, new wisdom, mm. new that knowledge. Means, yeah. That's the sign of a turban in heaven. And when God puts a new turban on you, that's above the way of thinking of the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. You're going to walk in victory. The devil has stolen enough. Yeah, that's right. Amen. 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 And there's one time, there are times in my life that I get, I get an anger in me. I call it a holy anger. Maybe it's wrong. <laughs> I call it a holy anger. Mm -hmm. I get furious. I lose it. And that's when I see children of Jesus allow the devil to steal. Amen. Because I know it hurts my father. Mm -hmm. I hate it. But we allow it because we don't go to the courts. We don't listen to his language. We don't take up our authority. We don't see ourselves in him. Because when you're in him, nobody can steal nothing from you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All creation. Right on, right on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Share another encounter. Yeah. About three weeks ago, just before I left South Africa, one evening at half past seven, the Lord said, Etienne, go. I want to talk to you alone, go and spend time in the Word. And I sat and I sat late on. It was one o'clock in the morning, still in the Word, and He just speaks and He just reveals. And later on, two o'clock that morning, I heard noises outside my house. I prevail, I had people screaming, and the words anguish, pain, torture just came up in the Spirit, and it was chaos. And I jumped off the couch and I jumped and said, Lord, What's happening in my yard? I want to go and see. And I walk to the window to see what's happening. He said, no, it's not in your yard. It's in the spirit. Mm. Mm. And I said, show me. And he took me into the depths of the earth. And he showed me his children. Some that are alive, some that are dead. How their souls are in captivity. They're being tortured. He said, Etienne, persecution is coming. And he showed me the demonic powers, burning them with irons, hitting them, crushing their heads against walls, just demolishing people. And brother, this is for you. He says, it's a season for my true intercessors to stand up. will go and set the captive that's got a heart of the father the heart for the lost he said in this season people's hearts will be revealed who's truly about me he's truly got the heart of the father the intercessors need to stand up and get into those places to set the captives free and why I have to apologize, but I, while you were dancing or worshiping, I forgot your name and asked, Edith, what's her name? Is it Brenda? Because there was an angel next to you. And I know your talent, your talent, pressure, is a new intercession, mental thing that God is releasing upon you. Mm -hmm. And He's going to take you into the depths of the earth. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm.
Ooh. Yes, wow. Lord. Amen. He's doing something new in your life. Mm -hmm. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be powerful. Mm -hmm. I've been many times been taken the spirit. Amen. Different countries, different places. And you go into the depths, into the underground cities. You've got to fight mm -hmm. to set the captives free. And the next moment you hear the glory train coming, mm -hmm. blows the whistle. You've got like 30 seconds. And the Lord said, release them into my train. Oh. <laughs> the doors open, you crush all the souls into the train. <laughs> Off they go. <laughs> it's amazing. I'll, I'll see some of the people in the spirit and I'll phone them the next day. I said, I saw X and Y and Z last night in Warsaw and Poland underneath the Catholic Cathedral. I was busy setting people free there. And then that same guy gets a phone call 10 minutes or somebody else that says, I saw Etienne last night in Warsaw and Poland in the depths of earth setting people free. That is life. No. That is the supernatural. I've got many. I've been under the Grand Canyon. I've been in the Red Rock, other side Vegas. I've been underneath in New York, setting captives free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the natural people. Mm -hmm. That's the natural. That is the lives of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Once you start experience, you can't get enough. And you go to heaven with the cases, Lord, I've been underneath New York. I set them free. Here's my court case. Rebuke Satan. You won't touch that people again. Mm -hmm. So it's not in the courts are not only about yourself. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's for the children of Jesus. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Right on. Come on. If you become like Jesus, the supernatural is the natural. The manifestations is as easy as breathing. Because it's impossible for Jesus not to manifest when you walk in Him. Amen. That's good. When you walk with Jesus in obedience, and unity, and when you have surrendered to bring heaven to earth is effortless because he does everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just walk with him. Yes, amen. It's about love. It's about love. It's about love. If you do anything on earth without love, it's not Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes an effort. Then it will burn. Come on. I'll give you a last testimony. Mm -hmm. Or I might give a quick few words. What's the time? <laughs> Brazil, first night in Brazil. The Lord said, I want you to impart them with my love and power. So I called to them, they're probably just 2,000, just over, run about there, just over 2,000 people. And as I started imparting them, I got slain in the spirit. And the next moment, it's all on camera in front of the pulpit, in front of everybody, on a white tile, a puddle of blood appeared. Manifested in the natural. Wow. Wow. People went to touch it and they smudged it, everything. And I just heard the Lord loud and clearly saying, the fullness of my love and my power is in my blood. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Right. The language of heaven mm -hmm. is the revelation of his blood and his yes, love. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. 
and that's inside of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And tonight we're going to do that same impartation. See your last few testimonies of Pakistan. First night I arrived there. First meeting I had was on the top of a five-story building. About also about two thousand people, and about 80-85% are Muslims. And the Lord said, "You start the meeting." As I'm going to tell you, and as I walked up to the stage being introduced, he said, go down that lady there in the wheelchair, go and pull her by her hands and command her to walk. Muslim lady. Mm -hmm. So I walked down and I took her by the hand and said, in the name of Jesus, you stand up and walk. And she stood up and she walked. But probably from here to that wall, she came back and she just fell in the wheelchair again. She had a stroke 27 years ago. She couldn't speak and she couldn't walk. She's just hanging. I showed Sherry the photo of her for Brian. She's just sitting in a wheelchair, just hanging. And the Lord said, go back to her and tell her to walk. I'm not finished with her. And tell her she must start talking immediately. Mm -hmm. I went back and said, Jesus not finished. Stand up, walk. <coughs> start talking. Mm -hmm. And she started jumping and shouting and just praising God. Oh, wow. Wow. That is how the meeting started. <laughs> and when the Pakistanis, the Muslims yeah. saw it, they ran to the front. We want your God. Yeah. He's alive. Yeah. Wow. The next night I arrived at another man. Obviously the word went out because that night the healings from the blind saw everything just happened. Yeah. There were over 20,000 people the next night. And the wheelchairs were lined up. The blind were lined up. The sick were brought in stretches. The Lord said to me, Etienne, start the meeting the same way. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, easy. And I went to the lady in the blue. <laughs> and I went to her and I pulled her by the hand and said, in the name of Jesus, you stand up and walk. And I pulled up and I left her. <laughs> Flat on her face in the dust. And I said, Lord, <laughs> and, I and I asked him to help me. We picked her up, we put her back in the wheelchair. And the Muslims in Pakistan are very aggressive. They're vigilant. They're so much full of anger. They hate mm -hmm. Christians. And again, at this 20,000, I would say at least 18,000 were Muslims. Mm -hmm. And now you let this lady, she's in her late 60s, probably 70, you allow their, one of their mothers to get dumped in the dust. Mm -hmm. So I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, I told you to go and tell her to walk. So I thought, I'll do it. I went back. I pulled up and said, in the name of Jesus, you will walk. And I pulled up and I left her. Oh, oh no. Down in the dust. Oh. Face first. Just lying there, she couldn't move. And now you hear the crowd shouting things at me, pointing me. I thought, I am dead tonight. <laughs> And I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, you rebuke that spirit rejecting the healing mm. and you tell her to walk. So they picked up, they put her in a chair. I said, I rebuke that spirit and tell her to go. The demonic power, you will not reject. I grabbed her by the hands and I pulled her. I said, and now in the name of Jesus, you will walk. <laughs> oh, oh. Down in the dust. <laughs> and I just said, said Lord, I'm dead tonight. What now? I said, Pick her up, put her in a wheelchair, tell them to carry the wheelchair upstage and put her next to you in the stage. So I asked them to do it, I went upstage and I started preaching. About 15 minutes later, I saw the crowd going mad and pointing and shouting. And I looked next to me. Here she stood, okay. out of the wheelchair, dancing and praising Jesus. Oh, wow. I want to tell you, when you're going to walk with Jesus, yeah. you're going to be challenged. Yeah. When you start walking here in your calling and your destiny, you're going to be challenged. But you need to trust Him. You need to obey. Don't look in the natural. If I had to look in the natural after the first fall, I was supposed to run for my life. <laughs> yeah. 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 At the same night. I said, all the blind come to the end. From there, whichever will charge, I said, walk in the name of Jesus. Walk in the name. Walk in the name. They just talk, 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 started walking. 
and the souls for that night, probably at least 5,000 souls came in. That night, the blind came in. The last blind person that was, was a 16-year-old boy. He was born blind. He's never seen his father, mother, color, nothing. Mm-hmm. And I prayed for him. And I heard the Lord said, he's healed and he sees. I said, thank you, Lord, you're healed and you see. And his dad came and he grabbed and said, he's blind, he doesn't see. And I went back and I went like this, do you see movement? No. His dad said, pray again. I said, no, I will not pray. My God said he's healed and he sees. And he grabbed me again and said, leave me alone. And I carried on praying for other six people. All the six people. Six. Six people. (laughs) (laughs) The next morning at six o'clock, the pastor where we stayed got a phone call with the father. He said, my son just woke up now. And he saw everything for the first time in his life. He saw me. He saw Kala. He saw his mother. He saw his brothers, his sisters. Amen. Amen. That's God. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, they asked me to do the last day crusade at the same venue where the 20,000 was. I arrived there. The stadium was too small. The Muslims opened the gates of the stadiums. They blocked the traffic in the streets. There were over 100,000. That night documented over 50,000 dealings. That night documented people that were caught up in churches. Over 50,000 souls coming into the kingdom. Why? Because I saw Jesus touching. Mm-hmm. You've been called for that. Um, yes. Every day yeah. of your life Amen. is a opportunity, mm-hmm. a privilege to manifest Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. What I'm saying now is for me as well. If we go through a day without new revelation, without an encounter, without a miracle, we have not walked with Jesus. Mm. Mm. it's for me as well I preach for myself because unity of Jesus walking inside means wherever you move it's deliverance it's healing it's signs it's wonders it's miracles it's impossible to walk and nothing changes Amen. That's true. the last case I'm going to give you I always ask the Lord, Lord, you've given me the crowds, the hundreds of thousands, the fifties, the eighty thousands. It doesn't matter. Never take the small groups away from me. And please take me to the slums, to the dumps where nobody wants to go. So there's one day, the Pakistani pastor said, I'm giving you this day off. You've been working morning, afternoon, night, just carrying on. I said, no, take me to the slums. And I went in there and it's disgusting. The sewage waters, the, the, they stay in a small room, probably this size. 16 people stay. It's disgusting. And I came into one of the houses and they asked me, just bless the daughter. One of the family members, the girl was five months pregnant. And they showed me an x-ray. The baby formed outside of the womb, yeah, on the side of her. Wow. But it wasn't a baby. It was just a thing that was alive. And she had to go in the next day for an abortion. And I asked, would you please bless her? Muslim. And as I want to pray and bless her, the Lord said, just say, I bless you with creation. I said, I bless you with creation. She got slain in the spirit. And I just carried on praying for the others. The next day, about two o'clock in the afternoon, we got a knock on the door. The family standing in front of the door. The girl stands in front of the door of an x-ray. The baby inside of the womb, fully formed. And it's God. (laughs) That's how God comes and shows us He's the God of the impossible. You've been created for the impossible. Amen. Amen. The key is to hear his language, to hear his voice, and just to obey it. 
Yeah. Amen. It doesn't matter what he tells you. Just okay. trust him and do it. Amen. That's good. That's true. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you.